Good evening, boys and girls. I want to talk to you tonight about this fella. Ants. Ants can really be a pain, can't they? Sometimes they get in your kitchen and you have to get ant traps to take care of them. Um, ants at a picnic aren't very fun. But there is a valuable lesson we can learn from the ant. The ant is one of God's creation. And there are some verses in the Bible that even talk about the ant. And I want to read those to you. Proverbs chapter 6, verse 6. Starting there. Take a lesson from the ants, you lazy bones. Learn from their ways and become wise. Though they have no prince or governor or ruler to make them work, they labor hard all summer, gathering food for the winter. But you, lazy bones, how long will you sleep? When will you wake up? Now, in another version, it's not going to say lazy bones. It might say sluggard or um, slothful person, but it does mean someone who's lazy. And it's saying, take a lesson from the ants. Okay, what's our lesson that we're going to take from the ants? Ants are little tiny creatures, and these aren't real, so don't, don't get all worked up and think I got real ants in here. These are just plastic. But I wanted to show these to you so that you can kind of get an idea of um, how much ants do. And they work together. And the Bible says that they don't have a master or ruler that tells them. They don't have a mom or dad or grandma that tells them when to work, what to do, what their chore is for the day, what they're supposed to do at a certain time each day. But the ants do it. They prepare. They get ready for winter. They work hard all summer gathering food for the winter. And if you've seen the movie, um, Bug's Life, that kind of explains that in a fun, um, cartoony way. Maybe that's something you'll want to watch together with your family after uh, this lesson. But ants work to prepare. They're preparing for winter time when there won't be any food. What does God want us to learn from that? He wants us to learn, I think, that they are wise because they take care of preparing for winter. They store up their food and they're prepared when that hard time comes. We need to store up God's Word in our lives and prepare for when Jesus returns. We need to store up scripture in our lives when we're faced with a hard time or a hard struggle because they want, I'm sorry, God wants us to be prepared for those times. When Jesus was tempted, he was prepared because he had the Word of God stored up in his mind. And he knew how to fight the temptation. He knew how to fight Satan. He quoted scripture each time. So, for example, when your parents ask you to do a job, One of the verses you could think of, if 
you start to complain is to do everything without grumbling or complaining. Or honor your father and mother. Or children obey your parents in the Lord, for this is right. So that's in Ephesians. Um, and Galatians, both of those books talk about obeying your, your parents. Um, so I hope you understand how God is saying we can learn from the ant. Learn from their ways and become wise. Do you remember in the New Testament, in the book of Matthew, Jesus tells a parable about some women who were waiting for the bridegroom to come. The parable of the ten bridesmaids. And Jesus says this, starting in Matthew chapter 25 and verse 1. Then the kingdom of heaven will be like ten bridesmaids who took their lamps and went to meet the bridegroom. Five of them were foolish and five were wise. Well, let's see why. The five who were foolish didn't take enough oil for their lamps, but the other five were wise enough to take along extra oil. When the bridegroom was delayed, they all became drowsy and fell asleep. At midnight, they were roused by the shout, Look, the bridegroom is coming. Come out and meet him. All the bridesmaids got up, excuse me, and prepared their lamps. Then the five foolish ones asked the others, Please give us some of your oil because our lamps are going out. But the others replied, We don't have enough for all of us. Go to a shop and buy some for yourselves. But while they were gone to buy oil, the bridegroom came. Then those who were ready went in with him to the marriage feast, and the door was locked. Later, when the other five bridesmaids returned, they stood outside calling, Lord, Lord, open the door for us. But he called back, I don't know you. So you too must keep watch. For you do not know the day or hour of my return, Jesus said. We're going through some hard times right now. But we do know that Jesus wins in the end. And Jesus is going to come back, right? And so, like my little ant friend here, this one's had a little bit of a scrape. <laughs> He's got a couple little um, bruises, like one of his antenna is missing, but you can see the idea. The ant prepares. So my message to you is to be prepared. And here's another insect that prepares. The bee, right? Bees work very hard. They gather nectar from flowers and they go and work very hard for the queen bee making honey. Oh, excuse me, and working in their hive. And did you know that the bees let the other bees know where to go for the honey? And the way they do that is by doing a special little kind of dance with their um, feet and their wings. Um, insects, you know, that God created have six legs. One, two, three, four, five, six. That one's kind of short right there. Hmm, that's odd. And they have a head, a thorax, and an abdomen and wings, right? Well, the bees do this little dance and that shows, kind of telegraphs a message to the other bees to let them know where to go to gather the honey. It's interesting when you study the insect world and even um, the world of invertebrates, um, which would include spiders, spiders,
spiders are not insects because they have eight legs, right? And they only have two body parts. But there are lots of interesting different kinds of spiders. And there are funnel spiders. There are spiders that um, have a little thing that hangs down from them. Um, that they use it to get their prey. Then there are the spiders, orb spiders, who do the beautiful webs that we see. But the funnel spiders, you might sometimes look down in your garden or your mom's flower garden around plants and see if you see like a funnel looking web, that's a funnel spider. So God created all these different insects for us to observe and maybe some of them aren't our favorites. Um, I'm not real crazy about spiders, which kills me so much. But um, when I was teaching about spiders many years ago when my uh, youngest daughter, uh, we were homeschooling, I really uh, got to appreciate God's creation with spiders and all the different um, insects that he made because they are all very unique and they all have their very special things about them, characteristics and jobs and the way they go about doing things. So it's very interesting to, to do research on God's wonderful, amazing creatures. Um, I again would recommend to you the book Indescribable by Louis Giglio that I mentioned in one of our first videos. Maybe it was the, the actual first one. Um, it tells a lot about some amazing animals that God made and also about stars and about um, rocks and the earth um, and how wonderful God's creation is. And that it's just, God is indescribable. Um, we can learn all these names for God and praise Him and, and glorify Him and, and call Him Awesome God and Faithful Father and our Great, Great God and, and Mighty. And our God is so big, like in the songs that you heard the kids singing earlier. And I hope you enjoyed that and sang along with Him. He is, but if... If we had to, uh, we can use so many words to describe God, but he really is so huge and so big and so amazing and so loving that it is indescribable. Um, I hope you enjoyed our little lesson about the ants, and I hope you'll remember it and be prepared. Okay, God bless you until I see you next time. Love you. Bye.